punishing the guys who... Right, so I'm on again. So, welcome again to Tatag Romania. I have Gabriel with me, who has gathered some useful recommendations and some useful thoughts of enhancements uh, on the sponsor's products at the days, like uh, from what I've seen in your, in your title here. And also that uh, he has some useful ideas, some outputs of his brainstorming while studying the APIs and the products exactly. of the sponsor. Of possible apps. Possible apps. apps. Distributed apps. Right. So, Mike, to you. Okay. So, my idea coming to the hack came out of my experience using robot calls. So, the idea really was simple. It was to try to enhance, to having, you know, the possibility of um, like a menu item to switch from voice to robot SMSs. As simple as that, which is so useful for, say, people who have ailments, speech or uh, hearing ailments, or they're ill, they can't hold the phone to their ear waiting, you know, stay on standby waiting for their turn to come and all that. And I had a look at the API days, which looks great, but it doesn't have these features. So I was thinking of proposing them. So it's not only for the ill persons, but might might be also useful for the new generation of um, who millennials. Don't have the time. Who, yes, yeah. for, uh, patience is not one of their exactly. <laughs> and for for each of us, I mean, I focused on ill people as as specific cases where it would be critical. Right. But everyone, would everyone, obviously, would benefit from time saving, having a record of their transactions with the robot. So no. basically, you envision this omni-channel switch approach between text and voice seamlessly, and seamlessly. without seamlessly. right. Plus, because we haven't actually, that's where we stopped when we had our chat. Say, the customer doesn't find the option needed in the SMS right. robot. Then, then the ro the operator can call back using caller ID or asking for a phone number. So to be able to trigger voice engagement in the SMS transaction exactly. messages, right? Plus, plus, not only if it's needed, right? Well, only when it's needed, and if there is a queue, just let the user know in an SMS, you're on position five in the queue. We'll call you when we get to you. So you to know, be able to get an to, update. To, to wait in a waiting queue of a call center, staying offline of the oh. telephone line. Exactly, right. saving time. Just and saving, saving I don't know, maybe your really health, were, you're not being exposed to radiation plus, of your cell phone. Plus, plus, the PBXs would be so much less loaded with calls right. on, just doing nothing. People yeah. are just waiting online to, you know, talk to an operator. But both the PBXs and both the network operator the networks, switches. All right. The internet, everything, yeah. So a simple idea that may be very, very efficient. Exactly. Right and very useful. Um, okay, so let's go to the next one. Very simple. This is the option to initiate via SMS a customer service call, basically. Be, as we discussed, more convenient to increase the speed. It would be a minimum time wastage, really, because you can do something else while your position in the queue just progresses. Right. And you're kept up to date through, uh, with SMSs. And obviously have more compre comprehensive information sent to you because in an SMS they can send you a link to a web page. You know, they uh, don't have to spell to you HTTP or www, you know, all that waste of time. Plus information as such, it could just send you a short article. Right. There's no need. Or a link if the information is larger. And, of course, SMSs can be kept for future reference. Once you've got all this information, you don't need to call it. Oh, I can't remember. What did that say? I didn't hear well. Oh, I got it wrong. It's there. Just click on the link. So you're a big fan of, of text. The thing is, I'm coming from a real-time world. I worked on real-time systems. To me, everything that isn't happening and wastes time, it really pains me. To be honest, I mean, I've got it now ingrained in me. Mm -hmm. 
working so on. So efficiency uh, it's in your blood now. It's just, <laughs> you know, um, it is for so many companies, especially in the financial world, it really is a nightmare being able to always avoid wastages of time especially. So anyway, let's not go into that because we're still t till tomorrow on this uh, topic. So let's go specifically, more specifically. Just as an example. Um, oh, and before that, a couple of, uh, uh, three other things that could also improve through asynchronicity, the experience. So be able asynchronously at the press of a phone key to speed up of the voice of the menu. If you're fine, you can, uh, you can listen to a fast delivery of invoice, you know, or even slow it down if you, you, if you can't keep up with the voice of the robot. And be able to go to the next menu, so I've got this one, or I sort of know this menu, it's not for me, go, 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 go. And be able also a single press of a combination of menu numbers. So let's say I want to, I, I know all the numbers through, I gave you a, a real life example of four or five levels. It's not uncommon. I know all the combination, uh, the entire combination of the key, 42251. I know where I want to go. I can't. I have to go through the whole menu. So j just say, be able to go straight to the operator. Uh, uh, so that one uh, is a feature, but also be able to go straight to the operator if the menu had been visited once before. So if the system matches you in the database, you've called once before. Well, this person might know really what it is all about. He or she knows what they so want. I got it, like an artificial intelligence feature saying exactly. that this guy most probably will hit the same sequence. Yeah. And it of, could be so easy digits. to implement. All right. you need to do and is let just him this option. record the name, number. Right. Not with name, not with personal data, just a number. Right. Someone called from this number before. And allow that person to type, I just chose right. an example, zero, zero, hash, meaning, yes, I know what it is all about. I want to speak to the operator because there's no, no, no other feature that will help me. So um, this is it. Basically, the main idea is this robot SMS. Switching yeah. to robot SMS, and cutting um, to, to time. Be able to, to be able to be presented in text with all the features yeah. of the IVR in voice. And discussed. Yeah. And to trigger the call. Really simple, if you think about right. it. How difficult would that be to implement? Piece right. of cake. To just send an SMS immediately. Right. No, it's, Maybe it's, to the same it's number. Straightforward. No. Or prompt for a number, really simple stuff, and just close the call. Right. Now let's go to the next one. All I need to do is close okay. this one, right? Yeah. Let's go. Okay, so let's, let's take it slowly. Because uh, we discussed yesterday the fact that People are not very keen on phone, especially. I'm double clicking. Okay, something's happening now. This is phone call augmentation. So Basically, just to, I chose specifically this title as a parallel to image augmentation or video augmentation, which is so popular now. Okay. Maybe I would abuse a different title. <laughs> but uh, it's just because it makes the parallel. Um, so I pressed enlarge. Why isn't it? Uh, let me help you with that. What is the... Oh, maybe here. Yeah. Okay. Now, this should be a mobile app with status, very feasible. Um, for processing sound of the incoming and outgoing voices 
in order to make phone calls safer, more intelligible and more attractive. Let's, let's just go to the next one. Basically, be able to preset and preset, adjustable, uh, have preset and adjustable volume, pitch and harmonics. So this is to do with the right interaction with callers. Um, there might be annoying callers. On the other hand, the person receiving the call might have a heart problem. In order to avoid to be scared by the tone of voice, by the pitch, by the volume, just have these presets so the voice is actually processed if above those levels in such a way that the person is less, uh, less affected by, uh, by the call. This, is, this can be very serious because there have been deaths from uh, abusive calls, you know, just starting yelling or whatever. Right. And serious bodily harm and So basically whatever. You, you envision an RTP masking with some... It's handling both okay. the incoming and outgoing streams of sampled uh, voice Okay. in such a way to, to have these sort of cases, mm -hmm. extreme cases covered, but also make phone calls more attractive through variety. Right. And we'll see on the next one, uh, uh, on the next line, I'm saying generally increased friendliness and attractiveness of phone calls because, on the other hand, you can do nice things with a phone call. Just have, I was just thinking, you could have sound emojis in the background, superimposed on your voice. Just simple, short, very short clips. You could have them you know, just for fun, not always, just to spice up the call. Um, on both incoming and outgoing call streams, at the press of a button. You could have them periodic, random, programmed, so easy, all this stuff. Right. You could have, have hear this one out. Uh, this was just an amazing thought. You've heard so many times, everyone must have heard so many times, people are saying, well, I, I don't dare tell that person so-and-so, or um, I never find the words. Why not have a pre-recorded message and say, please listen to this, press a button, and have that delivered. Or you have an abusive caller, be able to mute him, but at the same time have a message coming up saying, well, here's a message for you, a nice message, you know, trying to explain that what he's doing is not right. So not confrontational, right. in a non-confrontational manner. Couple of other ones. We'll, we'll so you've faster. got my idea: is processing the uh, the sound using clips or pre-recorded messages to enhance it, enhance the whole experience. And you could have library of sounds shared in public distributed storage, public blockchains, this sort of thing, so everyone can access them. And this concludes this idea. So that would be phone call augmentation. Now going one step further, you could have DSP uh, involved as well. Digital yeah. sound processing. Yeah, digital signal processing. So you can do things with the digitized streams. It doesn't know me. You see, <laughs> it only knows you. I've got the magic touch. <laughs> <laughs> um, this is more now transforming the incoming and the outgoing streams to sound maybe more attractive or 
just to change them a little, maybe other side saying, well, what's going on here? I like that or I don't like that, just to create an atmosphere. Um, so real-time voice, th that's what when you need really a digital signal processing chip. If the DSP on the mobile is not enough to be able to do this in real time, because otherwise if you're doing it in software, you might find that you get too much lag. Um, you could have the voice, uh, to, you could have voice to speech and speech to voice, back speech to voice in different voices, in different custom voices, pre-recorded, or say famous people. But that all obviously I said there within law because you need to see, this would need a bit of research to see uh -huh. what would be the legal back, you know, framework to do this stuff. But with predefined uh, custom voices, no, you could do that, you know, as you wish. And then again, you could have a library of texts, be able to deliver text, uh, spoken text in a certain voice. You know, I read this thing that was interesting. You know yeah. what, I, what I'm heading to. Right. It's, that it's again drawing people back to the phone. Um, and this is, I didn't go too far into this one because this would really know, need a lot of work in case one would actually need further hardware. And the final one, you'd love this one. I loved it as an idea. Whisper level microphone. One of the reasons we were discussing yesterday, there's plenty of reasons for people not to use uh, calls. Let me do my magic here. Yeah, yeah. I think it does something. No? Now, what this would be, it would be um, kind of special type of micro. Let me tell you, okay, let me tell you how I got this idea. I went to a conference and there was this translator maybe three or four meters away from me and I could not hear what he was saying but he was still speaking towards me in the microphone and then I went to him and I said you're really good you know I, I couldn't really hear you but I'm sure everyone must have heard you your translation and that's where the idea came from it would be a sort of mm, with a mouth cover in a special um, geometry, stealth like, to avoid the spread of the whisper. It, the person will still have to whisper. I, I doubt this would be feasible speaking normally. And whispering, again going back to what we were discussing yesterday, means that you are less showing your mood. You're more in a white speech mode rather than some uh, closer to SMSs, right. let's say. Um, but this would obviously most probably need an integrated DSP processor. You could have a mini display to use it for all sorts of features of the app. Um, it would ensure privacy because whispering Certainly, it's not going to be heard anywhere. Um, and uh, it would incentivize the use of phone calls over messaging. It would bring people away a little from that. I'm not saying it's going, it's going, it's going to go away. It will never go away. It shouldn't go away. But it will incentivize people to use more phone calls and direct... Um, interaction and that concludes right thank you thank well you thank much. you thank you for having me thank you for joining that <laughs> yeah it I was amazing see you next year again and hopefully yeah all these features are going to be there and do some maybe maybe next year with an app with an something app. that yeah. you can write here like you know call some api do some practical stuff because well, that hack it's about being you know pragmatic practical it is about Get implementing new new ideas code. because just 
getting the API working and You're more like a would not hacker. have would not have achieved much. I mean, hacks are really about bringing something new on the table. Right. So yes, if you can uh, do a mock-up or you can do a proof of concept, that's great. But it has to deliver, first of all, something new. Just the fact that I can use the API and did an app proving I can use the API, it really is meaningless for a hack if I don't bring something new. That's it's, you know, how I understand it. The, the hack is like a puzzle. You're putting all the pieces together, like you, you, you're using one of the sponsors' API to deliver a speech to text or a voice call, one other guy is to deliver a chatbot, one other guy is doing some if this then that uh, comparing and so on. So putting all the pieces together may end up in a very, very something new, valuable as long as idea or product or MVP yeah. or something. That's about that hack. Yeah. Okay. So next year. Next year, hopefully, With there's hack. going to be. <laughs> The actual, uh, well, the hacks are here. Yeah. The ideas. Right. Transform uh, one of your. But ideas it's on the. It's on hack. on on the sponsor side. Right. It's about increasing the efficiency and uh, right. capabilities. You, you had some recommendations, useful recommendations. Yes, I saw on the, on the first slide. So okay. thank you again for joining right. us. Thank you, and uh, good luck with the rest of the hack. <laughs>